Okay, Itamek Shishitsuko, good day. It is the late afternoon, almost 4 o'clock, on Sunday, September 24th, 2017, in the lunar cycle Awaka Sikinso. And at the moment, I have simultaneously two snake calls. Now, we woke up to frost this morning and it was, it was below zero temperatures. Um, I expect most of the snakes right now are already brumating. They're already underground in the dens, but it's just the odd stragglers that are trying to make their way back in the little bit of warm-ups that we have. And so this afternoon it's warmed up. All of a sudden I have two snake calls. I was on my way over to the first one, which is in uh, Legacy Ridge on the north side. There's a bull snake in somebody's yard. But then I got a call. I was, uh, I was going down Bridge Drive and I got a call um, and of a report of a rattlesnake over here on uh, in Popson Park on the road. And so whenever there's a snake on the road, of course the snake on the road is gonna take uh, precedence over the one in somebody's yard. So I'm gonna hustle over here, uh, deal with the rattlesnake and then go over to uh, Legacy Ridge and, and take care of the bull snake. Good, how are you? I feel like I interrupted you doing something fun. Uh, no, I was uh, on my way to get a bull snake on the other side oh, of town. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Heavyhead. Hello, how are you? Hi, Mr. Heavyhead. Good to meet you. You're a rock star for our kids. <laughs> He, he, I think he got bumped. His mouth is open, which is, that's not usual. Um, let me go grab the bucket. I'll just take him home and He's not, he's not squished bad, but he's hurt. So it's hard to say whether or not he'll survive this one, but he, it's not, certainly not the worst case I've ever seen. And, but his mouth is open and that's not usual. Hey, my friend. Okay. Okay, so I am in the Legacy Ridge area, and I already had a scout around for the bull snake, uh, and the people who had seen it um, told me where they thought it would be, and it's not there. So it's not atypical at all for the bull snakes to pull a Houdini and, and just disappear, and uh, that's actually fine by me, because they know exactly where they're going anyway, so it's not a bad thing. Um, so no bull snake pickup, but I do have the rattlesnake, and the rattlesnake is not looking too good. Um, I think he was bumped by a car. Looks like the tail end might be might be flat. No, uh, he, he might have got hit on the tail end. Um, for sure, there's something wrong around the head because he's opening his mouth in a in a way that is unnatural for rattlesnakes. Um, I mean, not unnatural that they open their mouth, but they just don't normally have it ajar in the way that he does. So, I don't have high hopes for the rattlesnake. Usually, um, I mean, they're, they're really delicate creatures, and uh, any significant injury is pretty much the end for them, but I'm going to take him and see what I can do for him. 
Yeah, I guess I'll just uh, post an update when I have one. Okay, just wanted to give you guys a little closure on this story. Um, I did take the young snake home and to do a medical exam. Um, myself and my friend John Nightingale, who's a retired veterinarian, took a really good close look and went hands-on with it. We were with her, I believe. And it appears that the extent of the damage is a broken jaw. The lower jaw is broken. And uh, for that matter, I shouldn't even have the camera all close up to the glass like this because if she strikes at the glass, that might just aggravate the injury, obviously. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with her. I'm going to uh, put a word out among um, herpetologists and snake people because I know that this is an, an injury that is dealt with pretty often, but I've never dealt with it. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask what people do, what's the process, uh, so that we can make sure that this snake gets healed up and gets back into the coolies, into the wild. So, for right now, I was fortunate. Um, I, I put a message out on a couple of different pages, local Facebook pages, including the Parrot Lovers of Lethbridge, and um, a very generous uh, Rebecca Thomas donated this perfectly sized enclosure for this little snake um, for the for the duration of the of the medical dealings with her so it's very nice of her and um, I, I have high hopes for this snake I'm pretty sure that uh, she's going to heal up and, and be able to go back out and enjoy a long life um, so many snakes any little bump on the road and that's it for them but in this case I think uh, we have really good chance of of getting her healed up and getting her back out there. Um, especially because, you know, reptiles don't necessarily need to eat <laughs> all the time, right? Uh, a snake can go for a couple of months, you know, without eating. I mean, they go half the year um, during the brumation, but even without, I know they can go um, for a long time. So that'll give the jaw some time, I think, to, to heal up. But I, I, I am just going to ask and, and see what people can tell me, of course, um, who have dealt with this injury before. So that is the story for now. Just wanted to share it and, and uh, not just leave it dangling there as an injured snake on the road that uh, don't know what happened to it.